Year after year, one of the top killers in general aviation is the category of accidents caused by VFR flight into instrument meteorological conditions, IMC. We're all made aware of the dangers of flying without reference to the horizon when we're not on an IFR flight with proper instruments, and we read all about the spatial and physiological dangers of doing so, yet the problem seems to persist. Let's look at an all-too-common chain of events that lead to VFR flight into IMC as a judgment-free way to see how otherwise smart and well-trained pilots can make a poor decision. We'll look at ways to avoid the risk as well as mitigate it once we're committed. Here we're on a nice flight back from the Shenandoah Valley in our Cub. This aircraft is very much VFR only. It doesn't have the instruments required for IFR flight, like an attitude indicator or turn coordinator. So keeping the right end up, so to speak, requires a good reference to the horizon. We're at 3,500 feet, about to cross the Blue Ridge. The cloud deck is slightly above us, and the METARs from Winchester where we've just departed from report the ceiling at 4,500. We should be okay at this altitude to both clear the terrain of the ridge and stay well below the clouds. As we get closer, we learn two important facts about weather. One, that it's not obligated to stay the same as what was just reported, and two, that valleys and areas on opposite sides of mountain ranges can have very different weather conditions. The ceiling is dropping a bit, and we don't want to enter IFR conditions, so we descend. And by the time we're at 3,000 feet, we're back in visual conditions. Unfortunately though, we're not out of trouble. The ceiling is getting lower as we get closer to the mountains. We'll need to drop down again, and we're getting below the MEF for this area, 2,300 feet. We're now doing what's known as scud running, staying below clouds by flying dangerously close to terrain. We spot that pass in the mountain ridge off to our right, where Route 50 cuts through the Blue Ridge, so we'll turn towards that, where the terrain is lower. It's not a bad plan, but a much better plan would be to turn around here and land or find a way around the clouds. As we get closer though, we realize there's no going through this pass VFR, and it's too late to make our 180 turn without getting into the clouds too. Now when we're taught about this, we're told to make a 180 degree turn in IMC to get out of it, something like a standard rate turn or a 10 degree bank, 15 degree bank. Well, we don't have the instruments to even do that in this aircraft. There's no way we can tell what angle of bank we're at. We do a sensible thing and we climb to try to get away from the terrain. We've broken the FAR by not maintaining VFR and flying into the clouds, but maybe we can climb our way out of danger and save the day. Now we're completely in the clouds. Our instruments don't help much. We might be able to keep level using our altimeter and VSI, but given how much they lag our actual altitude, it's unlikely that'll last long. As far as keeping wings level, that's an even bigger challenge, with only the compass as a guide and all the dip errors that's prone to. Before long, we'll be staring at terrain, not knowing which way is up or down. Luckily, this time we're able to get a hold and level out using what little reference to the ground we do have. Even though we have a bare bones panel, we could still bring some equipment on board to help. If we have an electronic flight bag app like ForeFlight, and we have it paired with an external AHERS like a Stratus, we can give ourselves attitude and heading reference data, just like we get on a PFD on a class panel, and use this to maintain attitude. Much cheaper than actually doing a panel installation or upgrade. We'll do this to reinitiate a level climb to try to get on top of the clouds. This would be a good time to call up ATC and confess our sins. See if they can get us a vector to an airport that's reporting VFR, and if any other aircraft have reported what the cloud tops are in this area. Here's something that you might do that's really more of a cool trick than a useful strategy in the clouds. The compass can stand in as a very poor man's attitude indicator in certain conditions. Let's get on a north heading. Right now we're heading about 330. To get to north, we need to raise our heading, R for raise, R for right. So make a very gentle right turn, trying to roll out on that north heading. Now, that lubber line needle in the compass can give us pitch information. If we pitch right, the line moves right of north, and if we move left, it moves left of north. It's only useful if we're pointed north or using the opposite relationship pointed south, and it only works if we level back out quickly. If we drift off the north heading, it won't be reliable, but it's a cool enough trick. We don't expect this one video will end VFR into IMC accidents, and there's not much here that you haven't heard before, but there are legitimate reasons why good pilots get into these situations. And one of the best antidotes is to always make sure your plan is flexible and that you have one or more outs that don't involve putting yourself in more risk. As always, you could sharpen your IFR skills and with a properly equipped plane, go explore the clouds in the legal and safe way. Get your IFR rating today with Flight Insight Online Instrument Ground School. Visit flight-insight.com IFR.